a feat of diplomacy and friendship. That's how President Joe Biden today described the largest prisoner swap since the Cold War. It was a massive effort resulting in four U.S. residents, Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich, Marine veteran Paul Whelan, the journalist Alsu Kuramasheva, and pro-democracy activist Vladimir Karamurza finally heading home. Here's President Biden surrounded by the families of the detainees. Deals like this one come with tough calls, and there are never any guarantees. But there's nothing that matters more to me than protecting Americans at home and abroad. And so we'll continue to work for the release of all wrongfully detained Americans around the world. Now, in total, Russia is releasing 16 prisoners in exchange. NBC News reports, quote, the U.S. released three Russian prisoners, including an intelligence operative facing charges of smuggling U.S. technology and ammunition to the Russian military. Slovenia released two Russian prisoners. Norway and Poland each released one. A source tells NBC that the swap is the result of nearly two years of difficult, persistent diplomacy by the Biden administration after the WNBA star Brittany Griner was released in December of 2022. Now, the exact details of this deal only came together in the last two weeks, with the president personally lobbying Germany and other European allies to help. For the released Americans and their families, today is undoubtedly a good day. This video from Russian media claims to show the detainees as they boarded the plane. Paul Whelan had been detained for more than 2,000 days since 2018. Gershkovich had been imprisoned on charges of espionage for 491 days. His employer, The Wall Street Journal, with this incredible homepage, as well as the stunning piece of reporting on Gershkovich's final moments in Russian custody, quote, the Russian Federation had a few final items of protocol to tick through with the man who had become its most famous prisoner. One, he would be allowed to leave with the papers he'd penned in detention, the letters he'd scrawled out, and the makings of a book he'd labored over. But first, they had another piece of writing they required from him, an official request for presidential clemency. The text, moreover, should be addressed to Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. The pro forma printout included a long black blank space that the prisoner could fill out if desired or simply as expected leave blank. In the formal high Russian that he had honed over 16 months imprisonment, the journal's Russia correspondent filled out the page. The last line submitted a proposal of his own. After his release, would Putin be willing to sit down for an interview? That's where we start today with the veteran journalist and co-author of the book Kremlin Rising. Susan Glasser is here. She spent four years in Moscow as the Washington Post's bureau chief there. She is now with The New Yorker. Also with us today, MSNBC's senior national security analyst, the former director of the CIA, John Brennan. And at the table with me, former top State Department official during the Obama administration, Rick Stengel is here. Good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for being with us. Um, uh, director Brennan, let me start with you. This is a very big deal, just from a logistics and negotiating perspective. What are the kind of things involved in getting a deal like this done? Well, it's an unprecedented deal, and it is a remarkable display of very effective and successful statecraft and diplomacy by the Biden-Harris administration, because there are just so many pieces to this. As you mentioned earlier, it probably was two years in the making. This is the continuation of the ongoing dialogue between the United States and Russia about getting individuals released. And so I'm sure that over the course of these last many months, uh, there have been detailed discussions that had to take place both within the United States government, because there are multiple agencies that would be, need to be involved, but also this orchestration across five or six other countries in terms of getting them to agree to release some prisoners, and also just to take care of the logistics about when this transfer would take place, how it would be done. And, and so, again, trying to understand the, the full coordination of this is really quite you know, remarkable in terms of how it was carried out just because there are so many aspects of this that were taking place across many countries. And also, I think it just underscores the importance of these alliances that the U.S. has built up over the years and how our global leadership really is so important and integral to be able to make uh, actions like this come come to fruition. And so, therefore, again, I, I am just amazed. I've been involved before in bilateral uh, exchanges uh, with the Russians, complicated enough, but a multilateral one done in secure manner, and no word of this leaked out before, it truly is a testament to, again, the professionalism of the individuals involved. 
Uh, Susan Glasser, uh, ever, all of these these prisoners, these hostages, uh, that's what they were, are held for different reasons and different causes. Uh, the one that, that was was most interesting to me was Vladimir Karamursa, who is an opposition leader for all intents and purposes. This is different from arresting somebody like Evan Gershkovich, who you expect they're going to trade for someone. This is a, a sort of a different calculus with, with Vladimir. What do you think was behind him being released? Well, you know, it really, it's very powerful uh, to see Karamurza in those images, actually, that you just showed us. I mean, it, they're the very definition of people who have been, you know, not only held hostage, but brutalized and uh, nearly killed in Karamurza's case, not only in custody, but also uh, not once, but twice he was poisoned uh, by Russians for the, the criminal act, as they saw it of daring to oppose Vladimir Putin. Oleg Orlov is another prisoner who was released. He was the longtime leader of the human rights group Memorial in Russia. Essentially, these are Russian modern-day dissidents uh -huh. who the United States chose to trade for. I think it really reinforces the extent to which uh, this is a Cold War-like situation, and uh, Russia has become a country where even freedom of speech uh, is, is a criminal act. I, I think it's really a, a bold gesture uh, by the United States and its allies. It, it speaks to the idea that, you know, Russia wants killers, murderers, and spies back, and we're uh, working for the freedom of people who, who simply chose to oppose Putin's tyranny. Rick, I want to play for you something that Secretary of State Blinken said today on the complexity. Uh, Director Brennan was referring to this, but the complexity of this deal and what he referred to as enlarging the problem set. Let's listen to him. Apologies to those people who are only getting the audio of the show. That was a little, uh, the recording wasn't fantastic on that. But he's talking about enlarging the problem set is sometimes the key to the solution. We don't think about that. Those of us who don't negotiate things for a living think that you want to keep things uh, to, the, to the specifics of the problem. You have a, a, a prisoner, we've got a prisoner we want to trade. This became successful because the Biden administration reached out to other countries to say, why don't we make this a multilateral deal? Yes, it's a paradox, Ali, and it's, but it is also an axiom in diplomacy is that if you have a small intractable problem, making it bigger sometimes solves it because there are other pieces that are working. Like maybe Slovenia wants to get rid of those two people and get someone back. And so, but as, as John said, I mean, this is like a three-dimensional chess problem. I mean, even the negotiations within the U.S. government are complicated. But it's a tribute, as President Biden said, to alliances, mm -hmm. to friendships where people trust each other where the chancellor of Germany released a, an assassin, a killed a German citizen on, on his territory because the U.S. president and the U.S. government asked him to and because he knows that there's a reciprocity there. Right. That's super important. That's, about, that's what the whole Biden presidency is about, and that's what's on the line now. That's right. That's an important point. Uh, Director Brennan, uh, there has been talk. I mean, most people are very happy to see that these... these uh, these hostages are, are released. There is always talk about whether these sorts of deals incentivize places like Russia. Most hostages held today are held by either states or, or state-aligned uh, organizations. Talk to me about that. How do you think about that? That, that, that? Do these trades cause places like Russia to take more prisoners so that they can get more trades? Well, these are difficult choices, and you're dealing with the reality that around the globe, you have these regimes, the authoritarian regime within Moscow, that do not play by any type of international laws or rules and will resort to certain tactics in order to get their way. 
Now, the United States has a firm commitment to trying to make sure that our citizens are going to be kept safe and secure and can come home. And so, therefore, I'm sure that there were intensive discussions over many months in the White House Situation Room where these equities were discussed and to talk about the upsides as well as the downsides. But this issue of regimes and governments uh, taking hostages, uh, state sponsored hostage taking, is something that seems to have increased. We've seen it with Iran, we've seen it with Russia. And we've seen it also involving China and other countries. And so, therefore, this is something that really requires a strategic approach to. But at the same time, I think the Biden administration felt that there was a real imperative to try to get these individuals out of harm's way in Russia. And now uh, we're able to celebrate their release. But also, I think we have to make sure that American citizens understand that there are dangers, especially now given the situation in Russia.